Yo, what it do? It's the kid CB, Chris Voice. Follow me at Real Chris Voice. And your boy just jumped off the porch, dirty glove bastard. You dig? All right, so we got Chris Voice off the porch with us today. Off the porch, man. What it do? How you feeling today, bro? I'm feeling real good, man. Feeling real good. How you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Appreciate you asking, yeah. man. Appreciate you coming by today, too. Oh, yeah, man. for sure. All right, so what can you tell us about Hobson City, Alabama? Hobson City, man. That's, that's where I grew up at, man. That's the, that's the blood in my veins right there. That's where I'm from. That place, that's a small town, but it's a lot of talent there, man. It's only got one traffic light, you know what I'm saying? Like, really, <laughs> it's that small, but, yo, that's, that's, that's my heartbeat right there. I love that city. I've been all over the world, man. I've been on tour, and I can tell you, like, Everywhere I've been, I'm all, I always wonder, like, yo, do they see me back home? Do they feel me back home? No. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how you can just be attached to your hometown. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's how I feel about that place. Yeah. You're definitely the first one from Hobson City, man. I oh, yeah. Google it and look it up. Uh, cause I ain't never heard of that one. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's up there. It's an hour away from Birmingham. Uh, you know, the city is close to is Oxford, Aniston. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's just where I'm at, man. That's 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 where God dropped me. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> and you also spent your summers in the Atlanta area, right? Oh yeah, you know, uh, since it is an hour away from Atlanta, you know, I was able to 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 have access to the city, and I was able to to build a relationship with people musically over in the area to where I was I was actually pulled. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, being down there in a small town, you know, I I was involved in a lot of things I probably shouldn't have been involved in. You know what I'm saying? So so thank God for for me being able to network and build those um, um, friendships, if you will, you know what I'm saying, from uh, going to church, you know what I'm saying, and attending church and, and realizing that we all had a love for music. Shout out to my guys, you know, Hamilton Park, Anthony Marcus Royce, you know, but um, I'm just doing my own thing now at this point, you yeah. know what I mean? Just doing my own thing. Yeah, so you had the country living country, and the city life. You know, a, l a little bit of both. I guess you could say I had the best of both worlds, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I was able to <laughs> Um, cause I would be in Atlanta, you know, I would be up here for like, you know, three, four weeks at a time. And I'd be like, man, you know, all this partying, I just want to go home for a little bit. And I did, I had that access. I could just shoot down 20 and just, you know, be down there in the country and it sticks for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. At what age would you say you jumped off the porch? I jumped off the porch. Man, I had to have been like 11, 12, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, uh, after school one day, I was introduced to a studio that I had no idea that was uh, right there next to me locally, you know, so I ended up going there and instantly fell in love with the whole process of recording and just spent my whole summers there recording, started um, performing professionally at a young age, opening up for whoever came to the city because it is a small town. Yeah. But, you know, we would get people like your Sammys, you know, your little Romeos at the time, you know what I'm saying? So I was definitely front and center. Who needs to, who wants to open up? It was always CV. It was always me. Yeah. You started off just singing in church, right? Yep, singing in church. Yep. yep. So did you know back then that this is what you always wanted to do? Yes, I did. I did. I didn't know the um the ins and outs and, and how just whew, how rough it can be at times. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I knew that it was something that I wanted to pursue. So I started pursuing it at an early age and I started making the proper sacrifices because, you know, I did. I did live a life. At, at a young age where it was like, you know, I was, you know, listening to certain music and influenced by certain things and the people around me, I didn't really know. And I just remember at that point in my life, I had just graduated high school and I was looking around. I was having a conversation with my brothers. I was like, you know, we we, we kind of growing up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? We kind of need to start, you know, get, 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 getting into different things, you know, getting out of this life and getting into something else. So, you know, for me, I was, I guess, I guess you could say I was swept up, you know, um, caught up in, you know, threw into a whirlwind of tours and shows and stuff. And I did. I ended up leaving, you know, my brothers and my friends back home for a while, you know, and, and, and they ended up getting in situations to where, you know, things happen that they can't take back. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's why I had to just pretty much put the city, put the team on my back, put, on, put the city, put the team on my back and just keep moving. You know what I'm saying? That's why I always pay homage and pay respect to my brother, you know, free, free, Free YC, free charisma, free shot of B. You know what I'm saying? Those are the two guys that I used to roll with real heavy. You know what I'm saying? Before I really, really got into the industry real deep. And by the time I looked up and I was trying to be like, you know, uh, just wait a little bit longer. You know what I'm saying? We finna get to the bag. We're gonna be able to put this music out. Everything had already happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
So how did uh, Hamilton Park form? Hamilton Park, Hamilton Park, Hamilton Park, Hamilton Park formed. We 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 actually formed, man. <clears throat> it was um, it was it, it was it was it was in church, you know. But but I was really reached out. I was I was I was reached out to over the internet by um by the manager at the time, you know. And he was he was telling me about a group that he wanted to put together, and you know he already knew about us and what we were doing. He was like, I think that you guys really fit the bill, you know what I'm saying? So I want to um I want to bring you guys in, and I want to I want to hone you, and I want to I want to nurture your talent, which is honestly something that's not really being done these days. You know what I'm saying? I kind of come from a a different era in the industry, like right before the curve, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Like right when. Like my, cause my, my very, very first EP with the group was, was, was in CDs, you know, in stores, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? In Walmart. So it was right before the iTunes curve, right before the, the, the streaming curve, you know? So he took us in and he, and, and, and along with that curve came artist development, yeah. you know? So we had to really, we had to really dedicate our early, our early Hamilton Park years to that. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, we were like 18, 19 working out every day. You know what I'm saying? eating right, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, making sure that we was drinking water so our skin looked good, you know what I'm saying? Like polished and and going to um, um, media training, you know what I'm saying? Like things like that, you know, we were doing that at a very young age and that, and and now honestly these days, it's not really too much of that going on, you know not what I'm saying? All. They just throwing them out there. Yeah. You know, it's really about how many followers you got, how many followers you can attain and 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 they feel like that that's the engine right there. So they got enough, you know what I'm saying? Let's just put a bag behind it and throw them out there, you know? So it's, 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 it, was, it was a different part of the game that I came from. And I really did. I had to, I guess, readjust, reprogram, you know, because I came from a place to where you didn't really talk about your releases or you didn't really leak music like that. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just moved in silence and you dropped. But now, you know, the, the way the industry where you can, you can leak some stuff yourself and pretend like you didn't leak it and, you know what I'm saying, still get a bag. It's just so many ins and outs now the way things work. It's just totally different, man. Yeah. But yeah, Hamilton Park really comes from a different era in the industry. You know, we had the, uh, we had the song Thing Called Us and that song, that song took us to national fame. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, we got to, what was that? Oh, no, no, what, uh, I said about number 25, 30, something like that on the top Billboard 100. You know, that's real close. You know what I'm saying? To like the top, the top 20, top 10. Mm -hmm. We were, uh, we were doing things like, uh, top, top five on 106 and Park. You know, we actually went to 106 and Park and performed. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, that was a goal for a lot of people that they can honestly say that they'll never get to do because that platform is no longer available. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that was a part definitely marked history, so to speak. You feel me? And it carried me a long way with my fans in, with what I'm doing now because I didn't have to necessarily start over, you know what I'm saying? So I would never take, you know, everything that happened with the group as far as the way things turned out with the label or the way people may feel like things look that they turned out with the label. You know, it's always respect and courtesy and the utmost respect to Andre Harrell, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace. He just recently passed, you know what I'm saying? Condolences to the family and everything. But that guy, he said yes when everybody else said no. You know what I'm saying? So if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have been able to uh, do everything that we did do. What was it like, uh, you know, obtaining all that success, going on tour at such a young age? At a young age? You know, I'm not going to lie to you. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was, like I said, we come from a different part. We come from a different part, a different era in the industry. You know what I'm saying? From where, you know, everybody's just, you know, smoking weed and doing their thing on tour. It was kind of like, at that time, it was like, hey, I remember, I remember our management coming back saying that, you know what I'm saying? Other management was like, I would say like for groups like, you know, we were on tour like Miles Behavior and like, you know what I'm saying? Jacob Lattimore and stuff like that. And they were like, other management was like, hey, you know, y'all might uh stay away from Hamilton Park. They kind of smell like weed. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> well, damn, you feel me? But everybody's smoking weed. You know what I'm saying? But fast forward to 2020, everybody doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's crazy, man. And being on tour, it's happened. Like, like, you know, you, you just see, you you see those sort of things on TV with girls screaming and you know ripping your clothes off and whatnot, but yo that really happens. You know what I'm saying? Like you really, really, really can you really, really, really can reach a, a status of fame to where you really, really strike people like that to where they really, really want to 
touch you and just be on you like that. And it's 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 a it's a it's an amazing experience, you know. And it's it's just crazy. It was it's it's a high in itself. It's a drug, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's it's kind of like you once you once you touch that for the first time, you you, you want to feel that again and again and again. You know what I'm saying? It's just like that high that people talk about when they're performing and they're being on stage. It's it's real. Yeah. It's definitely real. So, but being but 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 to bring it back to your question, attaining all that at a young age, looking back on it, I wish I wish that I was more focused on my career at that point because, like I always tell people now, a, a label is is nothing but the engine. Like you're the car, you are the product. You don't expect a label to necessarily come in and drop that engine in that car and make it work. You need to be working at all times by yourself. And I wish I knew that at that young age versus just sitting back like, oh, the label got us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we good, you feel me? Gucci belts and girls and we straight, you know? Like, I, I wish I was more focused on where is this going? Where is that going? Like I am now. Yeah. That's why what I'm doing right now is so, it's, it's, it's so beautiful to me, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate every stream, every view because I know I'm attaining it on my own, yeah. you know? What happened between you guys and the new boys? Man, that was a long time ago, man. <laughs> that was a little minute ago, man. But you know, like we grown now, we men now, man. But at that time, it was just, I guess it was just more so uh, a, 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 a fan sort of thing, you know, like an image ordeal, you know, because I can remember being in my hotel room that night like, man, I rock with the new boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you're a jerk, you know, like. I was feeling them. You feel like, why, why, why are we beefing right now? You know what I'm saying? And then I just remember going to sleep, waking up the next day. The fans, the fans, the fans, the fans. I remember we were on, we, they were going back and forth on Twitter. Uh, hashtag has more fans than new boys. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Hamilton, like anybody has more fans than, uh, I mean, has hashtag has more fans than Hamilton Park, not has more fans than new boys. Hashtag has more fans than Hamilton Park. So it was like, okay. Um, such and such as dog has more fans than Hamilton Park. You know, just like different stuff like that, just egging it on, you know, like fans can do, like the media can do, till eventually it just got to a head, you know? So we were in Mobile when we started and we had to travel. The next show was all the way in Philly. So the whole time we just on social media, just, you know, eating it up, eating it up to the point. So by the time we, 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 we in Philly, you know what I'm saying? We like, oh. You know what I'm saying? About it, we, we ready to go. We ready to do something. So I think um, I think one of my group members had saw their tour bus or something like that, and they just like you know, you know, flip it off or whatever, shot a little bird or whatever. And I think uh, Ben J or somebody happened to have been on the bus and happened to have seen that. You know what I'm saying? So he um, we went and did our sound check. You know, went about our day as we was coming out of sound check, we were being approached by him. So if you've seen the footage. On YouTube, that's where it picks up at. So, it picks up, you know, Ben J is walking up to us, and then next thing you know, we exchange some words, and Ben J decides to steal off, and the fight was on. You know what I'm saying? Looking back at it, you know, it, I mean, something like that today in the 2020, you'd be like, yeah, you know, you put something like that together, and, you know, it goes up. But we didn't understand that at a young age as to why that fight went so viral you know what i'm saying we were on the e channel with that everybody oh, was really? talking about that you know everybody was almost talking about that more than they were talking about the music but we didn't understand what going viral was back then i don't even think going viral was a thing it was just like okay if it's popping, everybody's talking about it mm -hmm. we didn't know how to capitalize on that we didn't know how to do anything with that you know what i'm saying so that's just pretty much what it was if i seen ben j now i say what's up bro let's do a record you know what I'm saying? Cause we men now. You know what I'm saying? I got kids now, so it ain't really about any of that. You feel me? It's just you know, it was just hot headed at the time. You know what I'm saying? Being young. You feel me? Had all the fame, all the girls. You know, just trying to look tough. That's what it was all about back then. So how did you end up going solo? Did the group break up, or did it just take a break? Did it dissolve? What happened? Hiatus is the proper term okay. that you know what I'm saying. We 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 put on it, I believe. But you know, for me. Going solo, not, and I don't, I don't even like saying that, you know what I'm saying? Going solo, just continuing to put out music has always been something that I've wanted to do. I was even putting out music before we decided to really seriously mesh together as an R&B group. 
I was already, you know, putting out songs and whatnot. And I just really just, you know, shied away from that and, and tended to the group for an uh, adequate amount of years. But, you know, anytime and every time I would see some daylight or an opportunity to put out music, I would most definitely drop, you know, like, just like I did a couple of years ago. I dropped in the safe uh, all the way back to I'm just saying when we first got off the tour, you know, so I just really wanted people to know that I'm not from Atlanta, you know, what I'm saying despite the uh, the story that you guys were given, the Hamilton Park story. I'm not from Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I'm really from Alabama. So any any time I had an opportunity to really talk about my true self, I wanted to make sure I did that. So it's not necessarily me going solo or the group breaking up. It's just me just continuing to put out music. So was it an easy transition for you going from, you know, recording as a group to recording by yourself? I mean, yeah, I would say because, you know, I kind of did a, a, a decent amount of the leads. I wasn't necessarily the lead singer in the group, but, you know, I did do an adequate amount of the leads. So I was always in the practice of recording, you know what I'm saying, if that makes sense. And I actually was so in the practice of recording that I had to had to really, really I really, really wanted to get into the sound and the way that I could control the way that I was sounding. I wanted to be able to do it. You know, of course, I can't do that and record at the same time. So I had to really just get into engineering. And that's what I did. You know, and that's, I decided to open a studio so I could um, help, you know, other artists back home in my city of uh, Oxford, Alabama. You know, I opened a, a studio called Powerhouse Recording. So anybody and everybody that's in that area, if you need, you know, recording services, come to your boy because I definitely know what it's like not to have a place to record or not to even have a, a, a place that you feel like sounds proper you know mm -hmm. so i definitely with with all my years and experience of recording i definitely went through it enough to know what it's supposed to sound like what it should feel like when you hear you know so it's not easy at all you know i'm really i'm really hands-on when it comes to my recording process you know and um it, it wasn't that i didn't have a chance to do that with the group it was just more so it was already handled you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and, and that was more so of a of a learning opportunity. I, I was able to learn a whole lot. And now that I'm doing my thing, I'm able to apply what I learned. You know? yeah. All right, talk to us about this new EP, Blue Moon. Blue Moon. I called it Blue Moon because I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, um, with what we were doing with the R&B thing, I feel like I, I kind of more so shied away from from a hip hop element that I, that I do possess, an edgy element that I do possess, you know, and I really wanted to tap into that and continue to tap into that more. But still, you know, give my fans and give the people what, what, what they're used to from me, you know what I'm saying? But I, but I really, at the same time, want to begin to be my true self in my music, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I, set, on, I set on certain records for years, and I'm sure we all do this as artists. I set, I set on certain records for years as to where it was just like, uh, when I would hear it, I would wonder, like, I, I wonder if people are going to believe that, you know what I'm saying, if that makes sense, you know what I'm saying, because it's like, okay, um, I love being truthful in my music, you know what I'm saying, all the way down to the R&B and all the way down to the hip hop that I do as well, you know, so I'm always telling the truth on both sides. So sometimes I would sit back, I would sit back with some of my records and be like, yo, honestly, I don't want to scare people. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to come off. I don't want to like because you're used to this R&B vibe from Chris Voice. So let me let me slide you into that. You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't want to be boxed in as an artist any longer. You know, so I really respect artists like Chris Brown and, and even even just even the way that 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 music is received these days. Like you got so many artists like Roddy Rich and 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 Polo G and Lil TJ, just all these artists just melodically. You know what I'm saying? Putting out music it's, it's really more so about the melodicness. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I really want to capitalize on that because I'm very melodic my damn self. You know what I'm saying? So I, I know how to make those noises and I know how to make those sounds. And I'm definitely, definitely a lyricist. I'm a songwriter as well. So I feel like it's the perfect season for me to do what I'm doing. That's why I'm calling it Blue Moon, because I feel like I can really dib and dabble like no other. I can give you I can really sing. I can really sing and i can really give you that street shit you know what i'm saying if that's just simply what you want so with this project i'm just you know if you listen to it it's 19 minutes starts off with the r&b strip club then it goes down to the real r&b then it comes back up to the street shit at the end you know what i'm saying and it's going to continue to do that with my deluxe pack i got a lot of big things coming with that and i'm just going to continue to put out music 
in that pattern so people get used to i want to keep you on your toes like is chris going to put out a a a, a street type vibe is he going to put out a ballad is he going to put out a tempo like you don't know because i'm capable of all of that you know yeah. and it's uh executive produced by white white Wyman. shout out to my big dog Wyman grinding man me and Wyman, we met at all at all places magic city you know what i'm saying shout, <laughs> really? out, shout out to uh shout out to rap city wednesdays man look so I had a manager at the time. She was like, uh, she was looking on Eventbrite, I guess, and she was like, uh, I'm gonna sign you up for this. You know, so Rap City Wednesdays, we can go, we can vibe out, and you can uh you can win some money, you know. So I was like, all right, cool. So we was chilling out in her spot at Buckhead and we ended up going, you know, and um I ended up I ended up winning, you know, and um, you know, they pulled me on stage, they gave me the bread, they took me the picture or whatever. Same night, uh, 21 was in there, Young Thug was in there. Jock was in there. Um, I had no idea that Wyman was actually one of the promoters of the whole event, you know. Mm -hmm. So come to find out, you know, with that, I was able to tie in with that. But uh, it was just a bunch of people there. It was a great night to perform. So I actually got to tie in with Young Jock that night as well, you know. Mm -hmm. But me and, me and Young Jock, we just exchanged contact info. But Wyman came up, gave me his information, and started, um, started inviting me to studio sessions that he was booking in. You know what I'm saying? Like... He was just like, yo, come out to the studio session, come drop some vocals. You know what I'm saying? I take care of you, just just pull up. All you gotta do is just pull up. So I started doing that. And and in doing that, we started um we started working with other artists like MP Crown, you know what I'm saying? And, and just different, just different artists that he would um he, he he would help me, he would help me just uh attach to. And he ended up he ended up getting um getting a record um with me and Lil Donald, you know what I'm okay, saying? Yeah. Secure the secure the bag. And then he ended up um, getting another record with me in Schooly, um, Money Moves, you know. So just working with Wyman, I, I was seeing like, okay, you know, Wyman's got the same vision I have, you know what I'm saying? Let's just get out here and just and just go and just work and flow. So just from ever since I've known him, we just stayed consistently working, consistently putting out music. And I looked up this year and I was just like, look, we got these six banging records. Like, I think it's time for the world to hear them. And especially when I, I, I knew it was time when I went live, probably like maybe like a month before that. And I was just playing those songs on my live and everybody was like, when is this shit coming out? <laughs> and I was like, okay, y'all want it. All right, cool. So, you know, here it is. And, and I had to also understand and also had to grasp that I can control putting out this music. You know what I'm saying? I thought that I needed somebody or like a record label or anything like that because I did at a young age mm -hmm. I was I was signed so I was everybody was taking care of that shit already you know what I'm saying so I really didn't realize that it was so easy and that's honestly the part of the game that they don't want you to know artists you know what I'm saying that's the part of the game that they don't want you to know just do your due diligence and just and just slow down I know I know us as artists we're eager to put out music and we're just eager to just just go you know what I'm saying really just slow down and learn what it is learn what it's all about and you'll be surprised about what you really can do by yourself. Yeah. Is Body Roll, is that the single that you guys are pushing? Yep, right now. You know okay. what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to the big dog, Young Jock. Like I said, uh, he tied in with Wyman, came through, pulled up to the studio and everything. That wasn't no, that wasn't no send no burst in type shit. You know what I'm saying? Send the money, whatever, how it is. You know how some people do it. You know what I'm saying? Like that was, that was real deal. He came and rocked with me that day. You know what I'm saying? And he, and he even pulled me to the side and he was like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm really rocking with your movement. I see, I see you've been out here in these streets for some years, you know what I'm saying? Campaigning and doing your thing. So I, I definitely don't mind blessing you. And if you go listen to the verse, he snapped now. He gave, <laughs> he gave you that old jock. He gave you that dope boy magic. I promise now. If you go listen to the verse on that song, you'll be like, yeah, he didn't have step on that. Shout out to the big y'all. Shout out to the big dog, young jock, man, for real. Do you have a personal favorite song on the EP? If I can be honest, my personal favorite song on the EP is Don't Let Me Go. It's a uh, it's an R&B ballad, you know what I'm saying? But it's that because it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like that song right there is just me living in my truth about a about a certain situation, you know what I'm saying? And and you know, it and, and it just feels good like I I know I know it's a hit and I know it has the potential to be a big record because every time I hear it, no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I'm at, no matter who's around me, it always hits me emotionally. And I've, all, and I've heard people 
tell me the same thing already since the EP has been out. Like, yo, that don't let me go. It's just something about that record. And my soul bleeding on that motherfucker. That's that's what it is about that record. You know, like um, I, I I had to realize a long time ago, like us as men, like we 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 pretend a lot more than 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 we really really tell the truth emotionally. You know what I'm saying? So I I realized that it felt good to do that. So I started just living in that more these days, and in my music too. And in doing that and changing the frequency level, you know what I'm saying? I, I noticed that people receive it better. You know what I'm saying? Authenticity always sells over anything. You mentioned deluxe versions on the way too, right? Oh yeah, it is more definitely on the way. You know, so I don't want to put too much out there, but I'm already working <laughs> on some certain things. You know, I'm, I'm already getting some um, getting some vocals back in from these verses that I done, you know, what I'm saying tapped into. So most definitely, I just really, you know, I, I, I'm out there on social media, man. Y'all follow me. You know, what I'm saying I really I, I speak a lot about what I got going on musically, but I do like to leave some element of surprise to what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? So it's really more so like, ah, I knew that was coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, just rock with me on social media. I really, I'm really, really, really transparent on there. At Real Chris Boyce. You know what I'm saying? You'll see. You, you, might, you might get some insight on there. I might drop a hint without dropping a hint, you know, but just right here, straight up in my face, I don't like to drop hints like that. I'm just like, oh yeah, he said it on that interview, so I know it's coming. You got to hold me to that. You know what I'm saying? Just, just rock with me, man. Real Chris Boyce. What has being a father taught you about life? So what now? What has being a father taught you about life? Being a father. Being a father, being a father. Okay. I'm just switching up a little bit. All right. Being a father taught me a lot about life, man. Really, really, it, it, it really gave me a sense of responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was on the road, I, um, I, had, um, I had had my first child, my daughter, you know, so um. And, and just not, not being able to, to be there every single day consistently because I was on the road at the time for a lot of her early years, it really taught me a lot about making sure that I know, I mean, that she knows that she's loved, you know what I'm saying? And, and same thing with the rest of my kids. It really also taught me balance, you know, because at, at a young age, I was so focused on music, 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 music. Then the kids came and it was just like, Okay, but this music though. But at the same time, I had to I had to realize I had to check myself. I had to bring my I had to I had to get my priorities right. You know what I'm saying? So it really taught me balance. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's something that we we all are constantly learning and struggling with. I myself still struggling with it to this day. You know what I'm saying? But it's just really all about the balance. You know, because I love my kids and my kids know that for a fact. But I just I just really just you know I'm I'm I know that I need to be more available you know what i'm saying but i'm i'm everything i'm doing is for them you know what i'm saying so it's just it's 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 rough you know what i'm saying like that question right there it's caught me off guard but at the same time i want to be transparent <laughs> and ask and, and and answer that question because it's like wow it's this music thing I, and i know some of y'all feel me out there it can get rough man it really can it can get rough you know and um you know time is time is the most important time is more important than anything you know, you always got to let your kids know no matter what you're doing. And I'm doing a lot, traveling back and forth, Vegas, in the studio. It's about 5, 6 in the morning. I still got to let my kids know that I love them. So that balance is important. You know, and it made me check other areas in my life, too. You feel me? As far as finances and just priorities in general, like who, who I, I deal with. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to lie to you. It was just my kids. My kids did all that. My kids just pretty much changed me. Yeah. Real shit. Real shit, man. All right. Any shout outs before we wrap this up, Chris? Shout outs. Okay, man. Look, shout out my big dog, Zay Capiche. Shout out Sway Mula. Shout out my big dog, Hasco Montana. Shout out my big dog, Cross a Million. Shout out N O N Chi. Shout out N O N Dougie. And we moving. All these names that I'm, all these names that I'm popping off right now are names in the city, man. Shout out Squares Don. Shout out Hitmaker Day. Shout out London Blue. Shout out Carlton Banks, you know what I'm saying? We moving, we networking, man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm around all these artists in my city, and us as Alabama, we got to tie in together, man. Free Young Tooley, Free K Digger, you know what I'm saying? Free Shot to B, Free YC, you know it's going crazy, man. Hom City all day, every day. Alabama takeover, you already know, man. It's Chris Voice, Powerhouse. <laughs> Ooh, girl, the body shape, 
Tell my mama go to poke it out, let me put it back. 